Hi everyone, prep time is over. Can I please check if team government is here? Yes, it's here. Okay, team opposition. Uh, yes, we're all present. Okay, cool. Uh, congratulations for both teams for making it to the semifinals of the Help Debate Challenge. Uh, my name is Tiffany and I'll be your chair for this round. My preferred gender pronouns are she, her. Uh, in the semifinals, we have St. Joe Private as team government and Hinhua High School as team opposition. Uh, judging with me will be a panel of five people, including myself. And that will be, uh, we have Amy Suhana. Uh, we, we also have Sarish. We have Manda and we have Aim. Can I please have the panel introduce themselves according to the order on Tabicat? Amy first. Hi everyone, my name is Amy. Preferred gender pronouns are she, her. Uh, all the best for this round. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Next, we have Manda. Hi everyone, I am Manda. Gender pronouns he or him. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Manda. Next, we have Sarish. Um, hi, my name is Sarish. Um, I don't have any specific gender pronoun preference. Um, best of luck to all teams. Thanks, Sarish. Next, we have Ayn. Hi, my name is Ayn. Uh, preferred pronouns they, them, but I prefer to be uh, called with part of the panel. Congrats, everyone. Good luck. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so I, I see we have some observers here. So a couple house rules first. First, in relation to your POIs, uh, I will accept the default POI method as your uh, as verbal POIs. Unless you prefer it in the chat, please remember to indicate it so everyone in the room knows your preference. The second is, uh, I highly encourage everyone to mute their mics, except for the speaker and except for the person giving the POI. Uh, please also refrain from sending chat, especially observers, uh, so you don't disrupt the speakers or distract them. Third, uh, refer to the panel as a whole. Um, I would prefer if there's no like gender specific uh, reference to us. And lastly, um, timer. You can see a timer on the screen, but uh, I am a bit worried about the connection on my part. So in case it goes a bit laggy, um, don't worry, the timer will still be going on here. So what you should do is definitely keep your own time just in case this uh, doesn't work. Right. So. Those are the rules. Without further ado, on the motion, this house believes that race-based social movements in the US, for example, Black Lives Matter, should actively encourage African-Americans to join the police force. I would like to call this house to order. And can I please have the Honorable Prime Minister to start the debate? Here, here. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, I'll start my speech in three. Two, one. In an oppressive world where, where, white, where white policemen kneel on the necks of racial minorities, we say that race-based social movements in the US should actively encourage ac African Americans to join the police force to end this vicious cycle of institutional racism. First, some characterization. What does race-based social movements push for? Race-based social movements in the status quo assert that the police system is structurally flawed they encourage, because the police system encourages and condones violence, racial discrimination, police brutality, et cetera. What these move, social movements advocate for is restructuring or defunding of the police force, like redirecting funding to social welfare instead of buying the police lethal weapons, having police use tasers instead of guns, having longer training periods and stricter criteria for police members. However, these are very long-term goals. They are very hard to achieve in the short term because it is complete restructuring of how the police, work, the police force works and organizes itself fundamentally. And in the amount of time it takes to defund the police, we are seeing racial communities right now in status quo suffer. Many, many deaths have happened in the US by, by virtue of police brutality, and the, the perpetrators of these crimes have managed to walk away free. And this is the thing that we want to end in the meantime. However, because of demonization of police force, saying that it's a very hard to redeem organization, it causes outsiders and the black community especially to distrust the police 
when this, when not just family and friends denounce the police, but even the social justice warriors on social media denounce it, it's very unlikely for black, a black person to want to join the police force or to even respect the police force. So why is so women so effective if they're going to tell rape, if they're going to tell African Americans to join the police force and change their point of, and suddenly have a paradigm shift? This is because A, they have a wide scope of audience, which means that a lot of people will absorb their views and listen to them. B, they have a high social media influence. This looks like when they commented on George Floyd, George Floyd's murder last year, or different racial, uh, if, or different hate crimes that have happened in the past, they get a lot of attention and they leave a huge impression on people. C, the racial, uh, sorry, social movements are seen to be benevolent to their targeted audience. Of course, BLM would want the best for Black people, especially since it's organized by Black people themselves. Having stood up for them in the light of the recent events, it's likely that black people will trust them when they are told to join the police force uh, and suddenly have a paradigm shift. And why will African Americans be good policemen, you might ask? Because there is an inherent incentive for BLM who has, who has asserted that the police is horrible and, and a horrible evil organization in the past to want African American police members to change that perception of the police. They want African, Afri African American uh, members to transform the police to, or at least just to be a good police member who does not have inherent racial biases and does not perpetrate racial discrimination. So it's likely that African Americans who join the police force will have be will treat their, will treat, uh, will still treat members of their own race better or even other people better than whatever we see in the police force right now. And the uh, first substantive here, no, we want to reduce institutional racism. This is the structural problem of racism caused by having a disproportionately white police force. This happens because A, police are in position of power over the common people. This makes many members in the police feel that they don't need to be held accountable for their actions. Therefore, they can do anything they want and get away with it. B, racial biases can be brought out with little to no backlash in the police force's eco chamber. This looks like when there are little to no African Americans, these opinions are often tolerated or reinforced by other policemen who share similar sentiments. Even in the ex even in the events of police brutality, we have already seen in status quo the officers who killed George Floyd still go away for many months before having any legal action taken on them, or others who perform police brutality, like the officer who shot Michael Brown, or the officer who choked Eric Garner's father to death in front of him did not get much backlash at all from within the police force. No disciplinary action was taken on them, except for maybe moving them to other districts to avoid the public eye or to just retire them, give them honorary retirement and give them pension for the rest of their life. They don't suffer many consequences. And this is why racial, this, this is why police brutality still happens. See, instead of quote, African American officers who are already in the police force, which is the bare minority, often play into the modern minority mindset, which means that they will ignore or condone racial discrimination as well, because they're afraid of being kicked out of the police force or being a target of the racial discrimination that their peers propagate. So I'll take your cue right now. Okay, can um, understand that the status quo right now is looking like white people are basically at the top of the ranks when it comes to the workforce and colored people, especially African-Americans at the bottom of, bottom of the workforce. Can you please clarify how this belief will solve this problem? Is this relevant to the debate? Okay, next. Co the comparative here is that the best case is where African-American officers somehow manage to rise up the ranks. We say this is likely because of the sheer number of them and white policemen are more likely to see eye to eye with African American peers because of the sheer number and they manage to work with them properly. Racial discrimination in the police force is likely to be curbed when there is a significant presence of racial minorities inside it who understand and the severity and necessity to punish uh, policemen who perpetuate this racism. So it's less likely that policemen can just get away scot-free. It's more likely that they suffer constitute consequences even inside their own institution instead of just having outside backlash. But the worst case here is that we, we do concede that it's likely that African and American officers won't advance much because of institutional racism, but maybe that is what their POI was about, but the benefits still stand, right? It's more likely that white officers respect black officers more because now they see that there are many of them willing to join and many of them being a good role model as BLM wants them to be for the police force. In general, they will be more likely to see eye to eye with black people. Also, because 
they aren't be, this relationship isn't between a position of power and a citizen. It's between two peers who both share the same position of power. So this is more likely to happen on our side than on their side, where they completely don't do anything at all and just go just going to continue to perpetuate the cycle of abuse because white policemen are in the position of power, but black people are not. Second substantive, we want a better relationship between police and citizens. In status quo, white policemen and racial communities often have hostile or tension field interactions fueled by mutual distrust and racism. In a comparative here, right, African American police are likely to interact with racial communities during their policing as because they was a African Americans were a victim of racial violence, instead of being privileged like white people, they are more likely to sympathize with racial communities. For example, because of racial famili familiarity and sympathy, what black people are less likely to pull over or to give false charges to racial minorities just because of racism, right? Or at the least, they don't treat criminals from racial minority, like how <laughs> George Floyd was treated by white political who knew on his neck. They won't do these kinds of things to the people who make up their own communities. Because of all these reasons, we are very Thank you, Prime Minister, for that speech. Next, can I please invite the Leader of Opposition? Here, here. Uh, hello, Chair. Give me a minute to drink some water. Okay. Leader of Opposition. Uh, Chair, I thank you for waiting. Uh, before I start my speech, I want I would like to address that I would like my POIs to be in the chat. I would not like to be interrupted during my speech. And I will start my speech in three, two, one. The Prime Minister has said it very uh, a lot of facts and a lot of plot holes for me to fill in. So first of all, I will be starting my uh, rebuttals. I will be starting with rebutting the prime minister. Later on, I will begin, begin with contextualizing. Okay, so the prime minister has stated that if we had encouraged more African-Americans to join the police force, the police force uh, and that their prioritization would be to, they will be prioritizing to build a better relationship between the citizens and the police force. And that they would like to change the citizens' uh, perception uh, of the police force being incredibly uh, racist. Now, here's what's the problem. Their, if their incentive is to change the, their perception of, of the police force, then the, and then the already white dominant uh, police force we just want to uh, hire African Americans as a sort of tool to, in, to tell the people that we are not racist, we actually respect uh, African Americans. Well, actually, internally, there is a lot of discrimination going on, just, uh, just like how my opposition POI, the prime minister just now, saying that African Americans are already in the bottom of the barrel for centuries, they are already in the bottom of the barrel. And to say to encourage more African Americans into uh, already white dominant. POI. Did I say I already say I want my POIs to be in chat? Please respect me. Okay. To change. Okay. See what you did to me. Okay. To for an uh, already white dominant police force. Oh, for an already white dominant police force to 
uh, use African Americans as a tool to change their uh, the their the citizens' perception of the police force. This there this does not uh, end the discrimination that goes on in that goes on in the police force for white races higher ups to uh, to be racist for white races higher up to be discriminated against the black juniors who are encouraged to join the police force who start off as juniors who start off as the bottom of the hierarchy this does not change the discrimination against them now they say that they said something about uh, not having uh, to reduce accountability of the police force by somehow encouraging African Americans to join the police force. This does not change the fact that pol that policemen have immunity. This uh, actually this does not change the fact that the policemen have immunity. Yeah. This does not change the fact that white police officers, white black police officers, still do not have hold a common ability once they uh, commit a crime. This does not change the fact that police brutality will somehow reduce if we have African Americans to somehow sympathize with their fellow people of color when they commit a crime. No, because the reason why uh, people, uh, police officers target colored people is because colored people, let me give you a picture of how they uh, look like in America right now. Colored people live in more low income areas. They're uh, where, where public services are more are more least, where job opportunities uh, are not that many, meaning that the opportunity to commit a crime will rise there. Meaning that uh, therefore, this is the more reason why white uh, police officers would want to target colored people and have somehow having encouraged uh, African Americans to join the police force does not change the fact that many colored people live in low income areas. No, I will not take your POI. Anyway, now let me give you a picture on how uh, the American workforce looks like right now. Only 5% of uh, CEOs in America are African Americans. This makes it incredibly white dominant in, Ameri in the American workforce. And this does not change in the American police force. Just like how I said just now, having African Americans join the police force, they will be starting off as juniors. They will starting off as people who, do, uh, who don't have that much power yet because they start as the uh, they start at the bottom of the hierarchy. And, uh, and to change the racial discrimination uh, in America, to encourage African Americans to join the police force does not simply change that. Maybe in the short term it does, but long term wise, it does not because the hierarchy, the racial discrimination is still there, still there. And so how will this look like in Gosport? Is this sort of policy is implemented? Number one, immunity of the police officers still do not change. Black white officers still do not get, uh, still can get away with the crime they have because uh, of the blue uniform culture uh, that is in the academy that somehow teaches its police officers to target colored people. Uh, to target colored people yeah. and because to somehow climb up the hierarchy, black uh, officers are forced or more submitted, submissive to listen to their higher ups to target colored people. Therefore, uh, in order to climb the hierarchy, in order to uh, get praise, uh, to get a good impression from their higher ups, even though they are targeting their own siblings, their own people of color. And this will create more discourse between the colored community and the police officers because the colored community will see that their own colored people. Oh, is there additional time?
well, you see that their own color people are targeting them. Now, uh, that is, I am very happy to post. Thank you for listening to my speech. Thank you, Leader of Opposition, for that speech. Uh, before we move on, just a reminder that uh, speakers who have indicated their preference, um, try, we, we will try our best to follow their preference of POI, right? Uh, next, can I please have DPM? Here, here. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so I'll prefer my POIs verbally. So um, I'll be starting in uh, three, two, one. So all of the things that the leader of opposition came up here and told us today was um, was false, and I'll be providing rebuttals, and I'll be going into uh, to elaborating uh, the government's case on this issue. So first of all, um, she, the leader of opposition came up here and told us that um, the African American police will start off as juniors, and therefore they cannot enact much change. But first of all, we must realize that in status quo, white police officers are uh, white police officers one African Americans in the police uh, to make them look better in light of them be, to being denounced early in public. Therefore, there's already an incentive for the police force to one African Americans. So at least they can, uh, so at least like what my prime minister said, so at least they can actually, um, you know, they can, true, because due to the racial profiling and racism that has happened within the police force, by having African Americans within the police force, they can actually, um, they can actually enact some a good, they can actually enact some bonds and ties with the people so that people are not, you know, afraid of the police. People are not, you know, uh, people are not talking bad about the police or even enacting social movements against the police, like Black Lives Matter, whereby their movement is to defund the police. Secondly, the first, the second thing that the uh, uh, leader of opposition came up here and talked about is uh, telling us that tokenism is just going to happen. So, first of all, she simply described it happening with no harms. And you cannot just rebut the premise of this because African-American police members will obviously treat African-American people better than white policemen because of the fact that, and also due to the due to what my prime minister has said in his speech, well, he characterized, uh, my POIs verbally, please, um, due to my prime minister has characterized that these police officers will, more, will be more uh, understanding and will actually treat these uh, minorities better. Uh, now I'll be talking about how uh, I'll be going into my first point about the impact of cultural diversity on law enforcement practice. So what does this mean? It means that there are when there are more minorities serving in the police force, the pre these police officers, even though that they are of a low ranking, or even though they may not be, you know, they may not have uh, much power within the police force, but at the same time, they are still working together with their colleagues and they still do activities with their colleagues, such as patrolling the area. And they can actually, when they see their colleagues do something wrong towards these African-Americans or towards any minority group in general, these police officers can actually, it acts as a check and balance whereby these minority police officers can actually tell these, uh, actually can, you know, make a complaint about these other police officers because of the fact that they have done something wrong, whereby they they have you know they were they they were attacked they were targeting this uh, person because he was a minority, or they're targeting this person because you know of certain of other uh, reasons. So now I'll be talking about how um what what is the importance of checks and balances in the police force. So we must understand that throughout this throughout uh, the throughout before I mean since long time ago police officers have a lot of power whereby they have qualified immunity whereby they cannot be sued for what they have done or what you know do what I... they do what no thank you uh police like what i said police officers have qualified immunity and there are rarely checks and balances within the police force because the fact that majority of these police officers are predominantly white the white people for example we don't need to look so far in america we can look in malaysia as well we see that Indians are being apprehended by police officers. Indians are being Indians die under the custody of the police force, and because of why? Because there's because of the, the racial discrimination that is happening against them, and this racial discrimination that is happening in the example that I've told you just now is also happening in the U.S. with these uh, these these police officers targeting these black people for because of. The I because of the notion that black people are cr uh, criminals or black people or commit crimes, they are juveniles, and we see that 
this all these facts and ideas that the police officers have are caused by the racial discrimination that has been placed onto these minority groups for a uh, since a long time ago. Sorry. So now, uh, no, thank you. So now I'll be talking about uh, I'll be talking about um, I'll be talking about uh, the the relationship between police and officers, like what I've talked about in my in my uh, rebuttal towards the leader of the students now. So first of all, when because of the fact that now in status quo, white policemen and racial communities have hostile interactions or have hostile relationships whereby they see each other as a threat. White people see a black people Yoy. walking around. No, thank you. White people see black people walking around and think that they are criminals and black people see white policemen as all the white policemen are going to kill them. So we can see that there's mutual distrust and there's actually racism that is being incited. And um, why and what is the benefit of actually adding these black policemen into the uh, police force is that racial minorities will feel protected. Why would they feel protected? You may ask. First of all, they will feel protected because they know that there is someone on the police force that, that can actually they can actually help them who are actually a part of them because they are part of the minority group and they know that these police officers, these black police officers or these minority groups of police officers will actually will actually stop these white uh, police officers from actually doing something that is illegal or doing something that is harmful towards the uh, marginalized community. And the next thing I'll talk about is about how what will happen on our side. So what the best case scenario on our side is where people actually can trust the police more. Because why? Because even though we, uh, we consider the fact that the system of policing is still flawed, whereby police have so much power and police have qualified immunity, but there is still racial representation and racial familiarity, whereby they know that these police officers, when they know that the police officers may stand up for them, where, may stand up for them, and as these, um, as these black police officers progress through the roles or move up in ranks, that means that there's, there, in the long term and short term, there will be some change that is enacted, whereby in the short term, there will be certain amounts of checks and balances, even though they may not be, uh, they may not reach the end goal, but at least there is a certain amount of check and balances to actually protect the marginalized groups. And uh, in the long term, what will happen is that these black police officers will rise up in the ranks. And when they rise up in the ranks, they, can, they have the opportunity to change the entire policing system. And therefore, this when they change the entire policing system, they will enact more changes to actually support these, uh, these minorities. The, the worst case scenario on uh, our side is that people will still distrust and read that. Oh, okay. Uh, with that, I end my speech. Thank you. Thank you, DPM, for that speech. Next, can I please have the DLO? we are here. Yeah, sorry. Can I have uh, 15 seconds to organize my papers so all? Yep. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, sorry, I'm audible. Yep, you are. Yeah, before I start my speech, I'd just like to clarify that uh, for any POIs, please have it strictly in the chat, and if possible, I wouldn't want to be interrupted verbally, uh, and I appreciate uh, for not doing that. All right, so yeah, I'll start my speech in, uh, I'll start my speech in three, two, one. We appreciate the government side providing a lot of substantial and objective data to the table, but unfortunately, most of the data they have do not provide any relevant aid to, to the debate and only serves as a distraction. To everyone on the floor, we implore the government side to actually engage us with questions, as they have only given assumptions on their side and only said and only screwed through the debate, saying that only the only benefits exist in their side, whereas there hasn't been any questions. So today, what I'll be doing is number one, I'll be giving rebuttals. Number two, I'll be comparing cases from both sides and giving my our side's arguments. Number one, they, their burden of proof is basically saying is basically contradicting them, themselves through their, their content. They wanted to advocate for for minorities, right? But they tell you that oh, people will respect the police force. 
But the problem is, the real problem, namely racism, isn't even solved. So that point is basically debunked. Number two, they tell the uh, police wouldn't be held accountable. So just by having black, poli uh, black police, they will be held accountable. I don't see how this is how this is true, and I fail to understand why they are putting their burden on putting, and they consider the fact that they are going to use uh, black police as the puppet for the jugglers behind, namely, uh, namely white people and promoting the discrimination and quote unquote stop the vicious cycle i think you are basically putting the dystopia on the whole thing again no no thank you for the pis they and then they tell you that they con the seconds we consider for the fact that number one they tell you that they want to use the use uh the black people as a puppet number two they tell you directly black policemen will treat bl uh, blackies better than whites this is literally what they said and they tell you that if people can make bonds but that point is basically far-fetched there hasn't been an, any analysis and it's and it's highly unlikely in which i introduced in my speech we tell, we tell you that you can have all the check and balances to the world and you aren't even solving the problem at hand namely the burden of proof in government side is basically to advocate for uh, minorities and then from and then stop race stop racism they aren't even solving this problem at all and even if the best case is they are they're only solving the problem uh just on the surface so uh with, with that taken now they tell you that uh police immunity will be will be taken by hiring blackies Hiring blackies will solve this problem. I, they fail to give any analysis towards this point, and there isn't any proof towards that point. We tell you that due to the polarized effect, minorities aren't even protected. Um, they tell you that minorities will be will be protected, but I but this isn't necessarily true because America isn't the quote unquote land of the free anymore. No, thank you for the POI. We tell you that it, due to this fact, there has been a lot of polarized uh, erosion of effect. We tell you that this isn't going to feel protected. These are just these are just going to give the white uh, give the white people the incentive to scrutinize and screw screw the uh the uh, black is over and then we tell you that this is superficial because the uh, in reality only the higher ups who are white are the ones that are manipulating everything inside so that basically proves our point now let me move on towards my argument so number one two three two arguments i have for you today panel number one how it contradicts U, uh, usa's narrative we tell you that us is no longer the land of the free anymore due to the problem of racism in which both sides are trying to solve so we tell you that in our side how do we prove this point number one we see asian hate basically basically from you two you can see a lot of these examples number two we tell you stereotypes in which it has been it has been basically considered by the side of government they tell that black policemen will treat blackies better than whites. This is this. I'll just use this example and double down on them. So this basically proves our point. So what? So what does this imply? We tell you this that this implies it, the perpetuation of hierarchy. So we tell you that the national security, the protectors of the system, the quote unquote police, are the ones that are the ones that are going to be amplified their position. No, thank you for the PY. We tell you that due to the fact of police brutality already existing in the past, we tell you that internal politics existing inside this inside the police system. We tell you that the blackies are just going to be uh, the worst case is even. If they were to climb up the ranks, we tell them that their hard work doesn't like necessarily equate towards towards their their uh their commitment. We tell them that this is because the whole system is already unjustified in in that sense. We tell them they aren't even able to voice out, and then with and then with our first amendment oppressed in that system, we tell them that you are only forced to serve under their puppet, in which it has also been considered by their side. We tell them that this is how you are going to harm your side. So we tell them that justice in the policy political system in this policy system is vastly subjective and also unjustified because it's the only the high ups in the hierarchy system that is going to manipulate everything so we tell that just by having black kids inside this is this is just going to do the opposite of what they're trying to push we tell that this is going to radicalize the whole system putting more intensifying this already straining uh connection between blackies and white americans so this is how they are they've contradicted themselves why is this so we tell that this is so because america uh, factually um, in america they have already proposed an, a new ideology emergence the zero tolerance policy namely they allow police to make drastic measures towards small towards small cases in order to prevent them from from getting from getting towards big cases big problems we tell that just by this when you put racism into this picture this is just going to strain the connection between both sides so number two how it indirectly oppresses Afri uh, african americans and how it doesn't solve the problem at hand so now, I mean, uh, now let me break their case from in from their side and also state arguments in our side we tell you that due to the polarized perception understand that for asian hate stereotypes black lives matter why do all of this exist it's because of the police polarized perception we tell you that the glorification of white is status quo and the oppression of black is the main problem of today's debate we tell you that due to the fact now, that they think they are superior in the due to the LW World War contributions, although this is necessary, this is necessarily false. But we tell that this is what we're doing dealing with in status quo, in which the government side has not engaged with this at all. So now let me just double down on this. We tell that this promotes neo-colonialism. We tell that this is factually factually uh, in America. The, in the beginning of the creation of America, they are the ones that are promoting, they are enhancing and promoting slave trading, and this is why racism is already rooted in the in the whole system and the, on the whole hierarchy. So this is how we proved our point. Why is this so? Number one, why dominate? Why dominates the hierarchy? Blackies are at the lowest tier. So we tell you that just by this point, the blackies are only going to be subjected to the objective changes by the uppers. They aren't going to be able to voice out. They are only going to be their, going to be their puppet in the end. Number two, how it causes black clashes in, in society. Number we tell that brutality will only be credited towards towards the blackies. Therefore, it puts on 
for our own how the how the whiteies are the juggler and then how the blackies are the puppet in this case number two we tell the exact activities due to the polarized effect will be exaggerated and therefore causes further discrimination towards a, a much more high, a larger amount of quantity towards the towards the minorities so we tell that for example el salvador has been human trafficking blackies towards america in, in all sense so in this kind of in this kind of intensifying issues who will be the ones that are going to take the damage the ones that are going to be taking the, the, the bullet will be the blackies so this is nothing but a puppet in this case and this is how i prove my point number three due to the history of basically slave trading we tell this is a repetition of, of slavery and what people will think is basically the slaves of the past leading leader, the leaders of the present so this is why the polarized effect will be will be much worse so uh, how do we prove this point? Are, how their side doesn't solve the problem at all. And even if it does the best case, it's only at the surface. For example, the, the example of Martin Luther King. The policies of joining the police is a very surface policy. It doesn't solve problems because people aren't, going, aren't being the, able to voice out. It's just basically putting blackies inside a cage in which you give food and water and tell them, oh, you are free. You are free of racism. This is how they are trying to solve the problem in which it does actually solve the problem at hand. So let me uh, just tell you what the effects are. Number one, the, this will basically give the whites the incentive to act as scrutinized and basically be the fuel for further racism activities. Number two, we tell that it's a major contradiction because the point of polarized is basically an exclusive point towards our side. How what does this look like? This looks like number one, blackies are involved in crimes because they are 2.5 times more likely to be charged and sentenced. We tell that due to discrimination, this is this is why it is true. Now, and then we tell you blackies in police, this is a major contradiction towards their community and basically scrutinizing themselves. And with that, I'm proud to oppose. Thank you very much. Thank you, DLO, for that speech. Before we move on, just a very gentle reminder to not refer to communities using slurs. Uh, I think whiteies, blackies are not an acceptable way of referring to communities. Uh, we should always debate as if the communities are in the room observing the debate, right? Uh, yep, so that was just a very gentle reminder. Uh, can we please move on with the debate? Um, government way, here, here. Hi, just checking, am I audible? Yep, you are. Thank you. Um, just give me a moment to set out my timer. Starting my speech in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I think opposition failed to understand who and how exactly the stakeholders are in the state are in status quo today. Now, let me just point out to you that the stakeholders for today's debate is the black community. Now, firstly, on exposure, because there's simply no exposure on the suffering that black communities go through every single day. White people in America don't simply don't see African Americans as humans. For example, this is proven through George Floyd, uh, Fred Holden. These are easy examples that we can see. Secondly, it is easier to make people take accountability when more of your colleagues call you out. Now, firstly, um, let's talk about how white uh, white communities get being called out by African American officers when white communities, uh, no, I'm sorry, white police officers don't do their jobs properly. Now, secondly, nothing on the opposition bench said, uh, nothing the opposition bench said was comparative or engaged with any of our analysis of how, at the very basic level, we are able to secure the benefit of African American Americans feeling safer with African American police officers. Okay. Um, all they told us about was why racism is bad. That is not what the debate is about. The debate is about who can better achieve a police force for the sake of black communities. Now, um, let's talk about what we do on our side. It's like golf today. Firstly, um, the problem cannot be perfectly solved on both sides. Realize that. But if we can save at least one black man from being choked, it is worth it. We simply cannot change the whole system to be perfect. And DLO just came up here and randomly claimed also that relationships will be worse. But we already and actually pointed out that black people as police are likely to establish closer connections. Now, secondly, uh, moving on. What is not mutually exclusive? Okay, firstly, um, not being able to solve racism. Both sides in today's debate simply cannot solve the problem with racism. We cannot perfectly solve this problem, but if on our side we can protect at least one black man by making him feel safer with a black officer, we win the comparative. Secondly, the police being structurally, structurally racist. It is worse on your side when you maintain white majority, just as in status quo, we get marginal benefit through this. Now, let's talk about um, rebuttals for leader of opposition. Leader of opposition talk about the POI from the whip. I simply don't see how it stands in this debate. Move on from that. Secondly, uh, no, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this in my clashes. Now, uh, moving on. Racial discrimination is still there in our world. Now, you guys felt to even prove to me how exactly racial discrimination can be solved on your side. Both speakers felt to prove this to us. Moving on, immunity on police officers. Firstly, this is not mutually exclusive and I need you guys to realize that. Moving on, um, I have also on target targeting the black community, but we'll be talking about that in my clashes. Let's talk about um, 
Let's talk about DL law. They all talk about how racism is still apparent. Firstly, our burden is to kickstart change within the police force. It will be difficult for anyone on both sides of the house to solve racism. Notice how racism will also be apparent on your side, like I mentioned earlier. Secondly, accountability is not there. Now, why wouldn't accountability be there? Dystopia. Excuse me, there was no analysis for us to retaliate uh, through what you claimed here. Uh, moving on, puppet. No puppet, okay? Closer relationships will, will happen. People are people and will be able to do their own things, okay? No analysis from their side as to how um how black people, black police officers will be puppets coming from the LO. Moving on, white people treat black policemen as uh, terrible beings. Yes, but that's because there aren't enough black people in the force. Until there, um, until there are more black policemen, it will be easy for the white people to bully one or two black policemen. That's why more black uh, black police officers should join the police force. Um, moving on, neocolonialism. No point in throwing a buzzword. Neocolonialism is a modern colonization. You cannot colonize people just because they join a police force. They are already black people, but ex notice that there is not enough in the police force. There's no neocolonialism. If more black people join, more accountability will be there. Because why would they not stand up for their community's rights? We don't know how neocolonialism ties to this debate. Please explain to me in your third speaker's speech. Moving on, how it strains racial relationships. How exactly is this um, supposed to be in this debate? We already established that more, uh, more exposure and closer relationships can exist on our side, which on your side, you have never touched on. <clears throat> Let's move on. Clash of beliefs in today's debate. On government side, we say that African Americans should join the police force because there are extreme benefits to this, which we have already proven to US on opposition bench. It is point. They say that it is pointless because it is harmful. Everything that they have brought out in their speeches, we have already responded to. And notice how none of their substantives actually stand in this debate. Moving on to clashes, which side can provide a fairer police force for everyone? Okay. On the other side, what did they talk about? They talk about talk, how tokenism will exist. Firstly, sweetheart, let me just tell you, this is not mutually exclusive. Even if on our side, we have tokenistic African-American police officers, sure, but your side have all the white majority um, dominating the police force. Secondly, you never proved to me how exactly African-American officers being tokenistic is bad. We told you we get the best benefit of it through my Prime Minister's second argument. And again, you guys have failed to take this. Moving on, even if tokenism does exist on our side, that badly we don't care this as there even at the very least there is black representation in the police force where comparatively it is um where in the um where the comparative is that on your side it is all white people dominating the police force now let's talk about what government side brought to this debate okay firstly how does the police force look like in the status quo african americans are underrepresented and it is extremely biased like i mentioned earlier proven through cases like george floyd Rashad brooks secondly why does this happen exactly because of how exactly racist the system is and how biased the system is moving on should this be justified that absolutely not because why is murdering someone who has done nothing wrong justified prove to me how on your side you can mitigate the harms of instant institutional racism in the system, which has already been proven by us through our analysis on state quo. Moving on, on our side of the house, we acknowledge that we cannot solve every single problem with an anti-African American hate, but we say that on our side, what we're doing can still provide a better, more effective mechanism to combat racial prejudice against African Americans, whereas on your side, you give us nothing on this. We also say that on our side, we can achieve our goals on our side better than side out can do that today. Second clash, which side can better protect the African Americans? Let's talk about opposition's case today. Opposition uh, talk about how it will only lead to targeting the black community. Notice how exactly that is the worst case on our side, but less police brutality is likely to happen by virtue of black policemen not internalizing racism towards their own race compared to some white policemen to black people. We better mitigate this harm on our side. You guys have never proved to us how exactly on your side you can mitigate this harm. Moving on, what does Gar what has Gar brought to this debate? If the police is fair, the African Americans will be better protected under the law, but there are already laws protecting the black community, you might say. Yes, there are laws protecting the black community, but we also acknowledge that because of the institutional racism that exists, the law often does not mean much when police brutality happens on a daily basis. Secondly, how do we mitigate this harm under our side of the house? On our side of the house, when there are African-American police officers in the system, it is much more likely that the black community will be better protected under the law. African-Americans' interaction with the black community, like we mentioned earlier, so like a black police officer, definitely would not kneel on George Floyd's neck, right? Moving on, since it is a social movement that heavily opposed the police having a paradigm shift and telling people to have faith in black police members, even more likely that the black police officers will be at least tolerated in public and get public support being seen as hopeful bastions of equality within a flawed system. I'm sorry. That, ladies and gentlemen, I've never been proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you, Government Whip, for that speech. Next, can I please have the opposition whip? Here, here. Oh, sorry, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, uh, before I begin, uh, I think my uh, the deal would like to deliver a verbal apology for a second. Can you please allow a bit of time? 
yeah. uh, panel and everyone on the floor. Uh, as, I, as I'm the DL, I'm, I uh, sincerely apologize for basically using the racial slurs, uh, for example, the B word and then the, white, uh, the W word just now. And uh, I sincerely apologize on behalf of myself and also our institution. And I promise to not, uh, not repeat this kind of this kind of problems again in the future and I yeah again I sincerely apologize for that and yeah thank you very much sorry for disturbing the debate thank you for that apology uh and uh, I think on behalf of the panel uh we accept that people make uh, make mistakes thank you for that uh next can you please have opposition with here all right thank you very much so uh before I begin my speech I'd like a little bit of time to go through my notes real quick Okay, so I shall begin my speech in three, two, one. The government side simply doesn't care about actually solving the problem of how racial discrimination works in the workforce. They basically only care about representation. They care about upholding a mask that writes, I'm not racist, rather than actually changing the race, racial system itself. And therefore, what are, uh, I want to establish today uh, that basically the, op the opposition's job today is to prove why the government side's role is that, why this policy would be bad for this, uh, for, African Americans, not just Amer African Americans as a whole, but also how minorities, including colored people as a whole, are harmed by this policy. So first of all, as the opposition whip, I'll be engaging with some rebuttals uh, towards the government side, as well as providing clarifications on how the status quo looks like and why uh, clarifying why minorities and especially African Americans will be harmed in this world. And finally, uh, my job will be to summarize the arguments from the opposition bench and to end the debate. And to end the debate as a whole. So first of all, let me engage with some rebuttals. First of all, basically what the government has come up with, uh, they have con uh, conceded that basically uh, their their role is to uh, to bring in more African American officers into the police force. It, it will make them look good, make them look like they have racial representation in their role, and basically it's gonna look like uh, okay. On the, on the surface, it's going to look like there's racial diversity in there. Everyone is going to be treated okay. So ba basically what they think is going to go on is that as soon as African-Americans, a large amount of African-Americans get into police force, they're going to get all buddy-buddy with the white officer. And I fail to see why exactly the quantity of African-Americans will, will better the treatment towards African-American officers as a whole. Second of all, they have basically, uh, basically uh, the first and second speaker of the government side have said that they have the police officers have qualified immunity as a check and balance, but I fail to see how qualified immunity serves as a check and balance towards the treatment of uh, African-American officers and the African-American community as a whole. Next of all, the, the, pri the prime minister has basically had so many contradictions in his speech, one of them being, okay, so uh, they say that African-Americans, they sympathize with their color with colored people and uh, African American people better because of their common history of being discriminated. But again, the Prime Minister has also brought up the point of African Americans being incentivized to conform to institutionalized racism in the police force for fear of losing their job. So basically, this is an, a direct contradiction to their own point, and I'm going to dig deeper into that later. So what is it going to look like? Why, why ca can't racial discrimination be solved in the police force? Let me paint all of you a picture. So what the, uh, what the status quo looks like, even let, let me give you a brief history lesson. So basically, Blacks have always been at the bottom of society and the hierarchy. So even after the Civil War, even after the emancipation of Blacks, they are still treated unfairly. So basically, there's a social stigma looking like whites are at the top of the sorry, man, well, and Sorry, sorry? Pure. No, thank you. Uh, whites are at the top of the barrel and blacks are basically at the bottom of the workforce. So even until the 21st century, it's looking like whites have a higher chances, chance of getting a job. They, they, they have a higher chance of getting hired or promoted, while blacks have to put in even more effort, possibly even up to five times the effort in order to achieve the positions that whites can get with even minimal effort. So basically, let's uh, paint a picture of what the government world looks like. So even if more blacks join the police force, okay, we do concede that whether you're white or black, everyone will end up, uh, will start off at the bottom ranks. That is true. However, as established earlier, whites basically have a higher chance of getting promoted even faster, and basically they can rise through the ranks with even less effort compared to black officers. Whereas black people, in order to join, the ranks, no, thank you. In order to actually make a difference in, uh, quote unquote, make a difference in the rankings of their uh, of the police of, of the police force as a whole, they'll be forced to put in even more effort. They'll be forced to basically conform to the pre-existing norms that have been established by the police force and existing superior superior officers, which are basically white officers. In here. And I'll, I'll elaborate further on that later. So basically, it's going to look like whites are going to continue ascending the ranks, black, even more black officers uh, continue to dawdle at the bottom. Oh, so, no, thank you. Uh, please wait until I finish my argument. So uh, it's going to look like police are good. Uh, 
but knowing that the police officers are really somewhat prejudiced against that with white officers at the top. Basically, this is going to encourage a hand, an enhanced sense of superiority, looking like whites are superior in the workforce. Blacks remain at the bottom. So basically, this increases the social stigma against the blacks, and we prove that we, we have proven why uh, a portion of why uh, basically blacks will suffer uh, under this policy even more. So moving on to how it harms colored people and minorities even more. So understanding that blacks are already at the bottom of the ranks, and they have to conform to pre-existing norms set by their superior white officers. So uh, judging by from what the prime minister has uh, basically said earlier, looking like African Americans are forced to subject to institutionalized racism in order to keep their position in the police force and they're uh, possibly even increase their ranks. So basically, they'll be forced to take action against their own people, looking like black officer, police officers and colored police officers are forced to oppress their own people. Uh, let me give you an actual example. No, thank you. Let me give you an actual example of what's like. Baltimore basically has a police force of. In, uh, of 42% being African Americans. But even then, black oppression in Baltimore is still is just as bad as as any other uh, any other American state. Looking like having more black officers in the ranks won't necessarily make the problem of racism to institutionalized racism in the police force and racism towards the African American community as a whole better. So uh, basically, what it's going to look like, it's going to increase the stigma that blacks appeal to whites, blacks bow down to whites, and basically it also polarizes the colored community and increases the narrative that blacks are essentially brutes and, in, and are basically brutal enough to enact violence, violence against their own people. So we tell you that even if there are laws protecting the black people, it happens Racism, uh, racism and uh, police brutality occurs worse in your world because of what at all the points I've established just now. So therefore, I decided your point is easier to take down. No, no, thank you. So finally, uh, finally, I'll be uh, summarizing the arguments that have been given by the opposition bench. One and two, please. No, thank you. Uh, first of all, first of all, understand that it. As a whole, this this whole world contradicts the U.S. narratives. Understand that uh, basically what the DOO has established now. America is no longer the land of the free due to racism, as established uh, with the current current ongoing trend of Asian hate and the trend that has been going for centuries of uh, African American racism. So basically, right, we know that there is a stereotype of, of of white of basically whites being quote unquote bad and whites being quote unquote a, a quote unquote good and looking at the top of the rank. So basically it's gonna perpetuate hierarchy as established earlier. So basically positions among the police force is amplified with the use of racism. Looking like blacks are at the bottom of the, of the barrel and whites are at the top supervising and dictating all their actions. And basically it leads to an unjustified unjustified justice system. Looking like stereo, uh, basically due to the structural imbalance, like looking like blacks are already uh, held accountable in the status quo for many of the crimes that have been enacted in American society. And now basically it's gonna look like blacks are having even more blacks in, in the police force is gonna polarize the community looking like whites are going to oppress the idea even more. And basically it in indirectly increases the oppression of African-Americans looking like uh, we are living in a, uh, the government's world will be a white dominated hierarchy and blacks are objective to subjective change with racism. And this will like, lead to backlashes in society from both white and black as a whole. So basically in the government's world, everything is just surface level in the best case scenario, whereas there's inner turmoil. And, and the worst case scenario is going to look like there's going to be public distrust of the police force, power imbalance, and social stigma as a whole. So basically, with all that said, I am proud to oppose, and I declare that this is why opposition should be clear, the clear winner of today's debate. Thank you very much. Thank you, opposition bit, for that speech. Next, can we please have the opposition reply? We're here. Yeah, sorry, I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, uh, please me, let me have a sip of water before I start my reply speech. Okay. Yeah, sorry, just to make sure, am I audible? Yep. All right, so I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Through this whole debate, basically, government science to just prove to us that, oh, basically, this motion, if it were to be uh, proposed, this is going to do more good than harm, and basically, how it basically caters towards solving the, uh, the problem of racism at the root rather than just surfacing everything. So we tell you that our side is basically proving why they can't, and then this is what, that is, has what we've been doing through the whole speech, and now we have basically 
prove to you why it does more harm than good in uh, in few directions. So in this reply speech, basically, let me just start this way. There's a huge bias amongst officers against other officers, right? Not all, but there's a majority here that follows the blue line brotherhood mentality. In academy and during trainings, they emphasize the importance of racial bias training. And I can't speak for all departments, but ours uh, specifically has a no uh, racial bias tolerance, meaning they can fire you immediately if investigation finds any ev evidence of history of it. Now, that's all, that's all on paper, and all of this will work in theory. The BRM movement in con is considered to be an Antifa movement with most of the officers here, and you will be you will be judged severely if you represent any form of BRM in any capacity. Initially, it may seem harsh, but that's the kind of nature of the beast here. Good officers do give their lives and strive to make their communities better every time they put the uniform on. And when there's preemptive judging on any group's behalf, and in particularly in today's debate, it's basically between the, between the racism against, uh, basically between black and whites. It becomes difficult to feel any sense of gratitude. So what have we told you in today's debate? We've tell you, number one, how it contradicts the US, US uh, narrative. Understand that US isn't the quote unquote uh, land of the free anymore because due to the root of racism or already structured it within uh, a lot of the industries, not just the not just the national security, but also in various uh, various uh, various perspectives. So how do we how have we proven this point? We tell the Asian hate, we tell the stereotypes, and how have we how have we elaborated on this point in which it basically debunks their challenges? Say uh, basically they just struck the whole uh, the whole basically the challenge of, and then why we told you, number one, how it perpetuates hierarchy, two directions we have told you. Number one, even if, best case, even if the, uh, even if the police, the black police, they can basically climb out the ranks, we tell you that, number one, it's unjustified. Number two, they'll be doing much more uncredited work in that, in the process. So we tell you that that's how you perpetuate, perpetuate hierarchy and then basically put racism and neocolonism in the, in the surface of the present in status quo again. How does this look like? What does this look like? This looks like basically, you're perpetuating the hierarchy saying that, oh, the, your upper tiers are dominated by whites and has been considered throughout the whole debate. And the lower tiers, the lower ranking ones are going to be are going to be blacks, right? So that's the point uh, and, uh, and how we prove this point. So we tell that justice is also vastly and subjective and unjustified. And how they solve problem, the zero tolerance policy is the is basically the only way and what's happening is status quo for site government in which this basically contradicts and debunks their own, their own point. So we tell that number two, how it indirectly oppresses some African Americans and why the point of neocolonism actually stands. So we tell that neocolonism, that point stands because number one, how you do this is basically perpetuating the leader and the follower in the whole hierarchy scheme. Number two, the only uh, the black the black skinned people are oppressed and silenced and trivialized in the whole process due to the glorification of their of their of their position. So this is what's happening in status quo, and then government side has failed to engage on status quo. Rather, they went on the toll and basically state. Basically, state America is basically a, a place where everything is fair and that and racism doesn't exist. Even if the, even if they do say something or bring anything up, it's too little, too late. And then any tangible benefits from their side is basically debunked at this point of as it, at this point of the stage. So what's the best case and uh, worst case in today's debate panel? But best case in government side, they solve the problem. But what will what will the long term problem actually be? What will the aftermath look like? It looks like institutional hierarchy within the within the police system. What does our best case look like? We solve the problem in a progressive manner in which backlashes are at its minimum. What is the worst case uh, between today's debate? The worst case in their side is basically discrimination at its peak. Whereas in our side, our side is basically solving the, the, the movement progressively in various alternatives. So that's how we prove it to you. Why are other alternatives in which their side does more harm than good and why our side should be the clear winning side of today's debate. And with that, I'm uh, proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you, opposition reply for that speech. To conclude this debate, can I please invite the government reply? Here. Hey, am I audible? Yes, you are. But before I start, I'll just apologize for my POI just now. I'm so sorry. It's become a force of habit, but I won't make any excuses now. Uh, it's sincerely my mistake, and I hope this doesn't inconvenience you. I'm very sorry for what has happened just now. So now that this is over with, I'm going to start in three, two, one. So two thoughts before I get into comparatives and compare yeah, before I get into comparatives with government is that A, they choose to bring up new material in their whip speech and their reply speech. So even though none of these things can be credited or should be credited, it's already too late for anything like, oh, black people won't behave as well, even if they go into the police force. But here's our response to that, right? They say that even though no matter what they're going to claim, 
it's it completely impossible for a black person, no matter how much training or indoctrination they go through, to want to kneel on the neck of another black person and kill them because they simply do not have the racist views. And at least they have a modicum of toleration between uh, themselves, uh, a modicum of mutual respect between themselves and the black, a uh, potential black criminal. So next. If, so next, uh, the other problem with what opposition is doing is that they are being completely uncomparative and when they claim all their harms, they're attributing it to the status quo, which is not our, our idealized world. This is a, this house believes that motion, which means we are debating in a fictional world in which uh, the BRM does something different and it's possible for different consequences to happen. But when they attribute all of their harms to uh, a singular thing, which is not enough black representation in the police force, this is where all their harms automatically fall before our other rebuttals towards that, right? Because they don't acknowledge the fact that they're simply criticizing their own status quo instead of the new status quo that we're proposing. And thirdly, the third problem is that they push unfair burdens onto us and to say that we will end racism in America, government has never claimed to be able to end racism or to be able to stop racial discrimination completely within a short term with this policy only. But what we say is that we've already proved to you how we do have uh, we do have marginal benefits compared to whatever opposition is trying to tell you with their negative case. They never ran to us how the lack of black people, how the lack of black people in police force is going to improve the lives of black people on the ground. So here, the, here are the three problems with opposition side. So now onto comparative side. Uh, okay, so on our side, we, we acknowledge that people, the members of public are still likely to distrust the police in the worst case. And some of them might even regard black policemen as traitors. But less police brutality is still going, is likely to happen by virtue of black people not going to internalize that racism towards other black people compared to uh, how a bigoted white policeman might treat a black person. So it is infinitely safer on our side compared to opposition where they give you no alternative. Why is opposition best case then? They simply do not have a best case better than defending the status quo because all they did was defend the status quo. Uh, they, all they did was assert that the status quo is better without proving or giving any substantives on how it would improve or solve any racial problems. Especially as we pointed out as the current mechanism is that how BLM wants to create police reform is an extremely long-term and slow mechanism that will never happen. And even then in the long term, we say that it's still likely for black people to rise up the ranks in the police force anyway, out of their time, right? They aren't going to stay at the bottom forever with that much media scrutiny and increasing attention on police brutality in the US day by day. So when all want to prove to you all of their harms, they don't acknowledge that they don't um, they don't acknowledge the point of short term versus long term. They simply assert that none of our none of our benefits will materialize at all and say that somehow they are better in the long term, even though without giving any substantive or any positive case on their own. So because of this Thank you, government reply for that speech. Uh, I would like to thank the debaters for that highly engaging and respectful debate. Uh, so the judges will move on to deliberate right now. Uh, do we do it in this room? I think we can just move to the other room, which is uh, faster. The other room, is it room of requirement? Um, yeah, I think we can go there. Okay, yeah. Um, so debaters and observers, you may move back to the main hall. Thank you. All right, thank you, panel. Thank you, panel. Thank you, everyone, for the debate. Thank you, everyone, for the debate. It was a very well debate.